Did you know that there's a new magic number for retirement and it's one and a half million dollars? That's right. It went from about a million dollars to one and a half million in just a couple of years. What is a magic number? Does it matter anyway? A 2024 survey asked people how much they felt they needed to retire comfortably. And in 2020, that number was $951,000. But in 2024, it's one point four seven million. And this prompted me to want to do this video because I asked the question, how important is this magic number? Why did it go up? And it is not important. What else could we be focusing on? Now, my personal opinion about magic numbers may surprise you. But before we get to that, I'm Nick Davis, founder of Brindle and Day Wealth Management. We are a retirement and tax planning firm in Frisco, Texas, helping people all over the place to create peace with their financial plan so that they can retire with calmness and clarity. If you like this information, feel free to hit that subscribe button so that you'll get notified when more content like this comes out. Thanks for doing that. Now, why has the number grown so much over the last couple of years? Should we even be focusing on a magic number? And if not, what else should we be focusing on that would be helpful? So why that number has grown over the last couple of years, first of all, you gotta remember this is not based in facts. This is based in a survey of how people feel, they how much money they feel they need. And it went from 951 to 1.47 million. And I would say the first thing that comes to my mind is inflation. You know, you can say inflation's come down on the charts, but in reality, people going to the gas pump and going to the grocery store, they're feeling it. And for years, people, you know, in retirement have told us, I don't really feel like I need to increase my spending very much. And we say, well, you could and you should. And now what's happened over the last couple of years is people are saying, okay, I definitely have to increase my spending. They don't have a choice because they want to keep eating the same types of food that they're eating and the same lifestyle and the things that they want to uh, have happen for them in this next chapter of life. So people are definitely spending more money and this could potentially be a lesson for near retirees where it's like, okay, now I definitely want to be able to make sure that I can afford to give myself raises in retirement. So therefore the number is bigger. Another reason I think that people may be thinking their number needs to be bigger is because of social security. It's been in the news a lot. People are concerned about it being reduced or changed. I've done other videos on this in terms of, you know, what they may do to fix this. I just uh, sent out a newsletter talking about uh, the reality of social security being solvent or not. Um, you know, just kind of bringing some objective view to that. But I think no matter what, the, the psyche is thinking about that and that potentially causes a person to think, well, I need to have more savings. And then another thing that comes to mind is I think people think they need a larger amount because they think it's possible because of the bull market. Meaning we get spoiled. It's been 10 plus years, 14 plus years of a bull market, just tremendous growth. And especially in the last couple of years, and I think that we overestimate what we can accomplish in a short amount of time. And if there's anything that we know about stocks on the stock market is that it's dangerous in short periods of time to expect anything from it. The, you know, the, the more time goes on, the greater uh, our probability of having a positive return is and the reduced amount of risk we have. So again, I think that people's brains are just thinking along those lines. And so that's why they raise that number. Now, is it even good to be focusing on a magic number? Last year, I met with a person who felt like he needed to have $2 million to retire successfully. He was at 1.7 million. After going through financial planning, he realized he didn't even need 1.7 million to retire comfortably. And so the question is, is why are you still working? So whatever your magic number is, whether it's a million, whether it's 3 million, whether it's 700,000, whatever that number is, just set it aside for a minute. I want you to set that aside because these aren't your numbers. This should be a very personalized thing. You know, it's a double-edged sword. On the one hand, having a magic number really motivates people. We've helped people to create their magic number, to get that magic number. I've done videos on that. It can be very motivating to have that magic number. The other side of the spectrum is it can be dis really disempowering for people if that number is just so large. You know, the larger we say this number has to be, you may not take the right actions or steps to improve your situation or your life. So I think it's a double-edged sword. It can also be very subjective. I've met people who have $5 million, they have a $150,000 lifestyle, and they feel like they need to have more money, right? Now, if you know anything about the math, they're gonna be okay. But I've met people that have a million dollars to their name and they're spending 
two times that amount or they spend four times more than they should be spending. And if they don't cut back their spending, they're not going to be okay. And, you know, sometimes those people aren't even concerned about their future. And so it's very subjective to focus on how much money you actually have instead of thinking about what it should be doing for you, which leads us to what else should we focus on? So if you're not focusing on a magic number, which is not wrong to do that, but there's something more helpful, and that is what is the money supposed to be doing for you? And that just comes down to income. How much income do I need to fund my vision for what that next chapter is going to look like? And a deeper question is, is what are you trying to create? What vision do you have for the future? What are you going to do with your time? Who are you going to spend it with? How are you going to fill eight to 10 hours a day? That magic number is different for every person because of two different things. And that is number one, how much income do I already have built into my plan? Social security, pensions, rental income. And then the second thing is, is well, how much income do I need to pay for the plan that I wanna have for my future? And it's different, that can create a different number for every single person. Many times when people are talking to us, they'll say, how do I compare to other people in terms of my savings? And you know, it's a very human thing to ask, but in reality, it's, you know, we might tell them an answer here or there, tell a couple of statistics, but the truth is who cares, right? It's really about, you know, the life you're going to live, the stuff you're going to be doing in that next chapter, that's for you, right? That's not for them. If you're able to do that, that's what matters. You know, getting to the point of retirement is different than getting through retirement. You get to the point of retirement by saving enough dollars putting it not in the same type of tax bucket, multiple different types of tax buckets, not paying hidden fees, being diversified and getting the proper insurances. So get that disability insurance if your employer offers it, max that out, you know, get the cheap term life insurance. You know, most people can do that by just reading a textbook. But when you get to the point of retirement, it gets more complex. You've got um, coordination of benefits. You've got distribution strategy. Are you being tax efficient with that distribution strategy or not? You're in a heightened period of life where you're more sensitive to your choices and your decisions. So having a team on your side can actually be way more helpful and keep you from making mistakes. Coordinating your benefits like social security, Medicare, healthcare. If you retire before you're 65, there's many things that go into it. And so I'm a little bit biased and I think that most people need help with that sort of thing. So in conclusion, I feel pretty mixed about this magic number thing. You know, on the one hand, it's helpful. On the other hand, it's probably not exactly the right thing to focus on when you really should be focusing on your income. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you have a magic number? Has it been helpful? And what else has been helpful for you to focus on for your next chapter? Hey there, it's Nick again. I wrote something that you might be interested in. If you want to know what my favorite retirement income strategy is for most people or many people, we refer to it as the Money Master Guardrails. If you're contemplating what your income strategy for retirement may look like, I invite you to download a copy of my white paper. Get the insights you need, download a copy today. The link is in the video description.